Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel and if you've never seen my face before then hi my name is Kiva and I'm bringing you another video. So today's video is a little bit different so it's kind of semi true crime related in my head though it's really not. It's a story about a plane crash, sounds morbid, is morbid but there's some positivity and goodness. So I'm bringing you the incredible story of Flight 508. So this video, I'm going to start it off the 10th of October 1954. And on this day, a girl called Julia Quebec was born. She was born to her parents, Maria and Wilhelm. They were like zoological people, very involved in animals and all of that stuff. So she was born in Lima, Peru. But her parents were originally from like Germany. Basically, when her father was younger, he really wanted to go and work in the rainforest, but he just didn't have the money, like the funds, any of that. So he ended up sneaking onto like a cargo ship, traveling to South America, and he walked pretty much across most of the continent to get to the rainforest. So that's some dedication right there. So that's where he met his wife, Maria, and then they obviously had Julianne. So when Julianne was 14 years old, her family basically wanted to set up like a little area in the Amazon rainforest, like an ecological system. So this is what they went and got permission and did. And this place is called Panaguaya, I think that's how you say it. I do apologise if it's not. And she'd literally been growing up surrounded by animals and knew so much. She literally grew up in the jungle. She raised a toucan, like she raised all these animals. She knew how to like make food, how to survive, how to navigate in the jungle. She literally could survive the jungle. She knew everything and anything about the jungle. She learned all these survival techniques, learned all about nature, all the different animals. And even before they moved there, she had so much knowledge of this. Her parents made sure of that because it was their passion. They wanted their daughter to love it as well. But education authorities, like, they disapproved. They wanted her to have an actual, like, proper education, you know, like a normal, ordinary one in a school. So they basically said to the parents, you know, like, your girl has to go to school. So she went back to her previous school in Lima, Peru, and that was like to take her exams and stuff. And basically, from what I can gather, they split their time between the jungle and Peru, so like they were always travelling backwards and forwards anyway. So basically, how it worked over there is they're like from and stuff, it's after they've graduated. So she graduated at the end of December, and her mother was over in Peru with her. And basically, her mother wanted to fly back, you know, after she graduated to be home and that because Christmas was coming up. Julian wanted to stay until the 23rd of December because otherwise she'd like miss her graduation and her prom. And Marie agreed because you know, this is a big event for her daughter. So they would like stay and then they'd put the flight back and they would be back on Christmas Eve. Now obviously everyone wants to go back to their family so there wasn't really many flights for this time, but there was like one flight that they could book. And this flight was with this airline called Lanza. And Lanza, they had a very bad reputation. They were not like known for being great. So they'd had quite a few crashes in the past like, years before this and at the time they only had one working plan and that was the plane that would be doing this flight they were not known to like be great at all and all of their mechanics were only trained in like motorcycles but yet they were like looking at planes some of their pilots didn't have like the licenses to pilot so this company doesn't have the best reputation but marie and julianne did not really have much choice you know if they wanted to get home they had to get this flight so the type of plane was called a lockhead l1 aaa electra turbo prop and fun fact, this is like the kind of plane that Amelia Earhart was flying when she like disappeared, which I will do a video on her soon. They weren't really made for that long, they were manufactured for about four years as they were known to just have like a lot of problems in general. So the plane had 86 passengers and 6 crew members, but they'd overbooked the plane and like they had 10 extra people on, which people say that a lot of airlines do this, like they overbook planes because they know people won't turn up, but like you're assigned a seat on your ticket. So like, I, don't, I don't understand how people can say that, but this company actually did, they had like 10 extra people. And it's just like a normal domestic flight, you know, it would take about an hour. So it departed from the airport just before noon on Christmas Eve. And it was the only plane to depart because the rest of the flights had like been cancelled because of the bad weather. Except for this one. Not dodgy at all. And like, a lot of like airlines and stuff say, you know, if all the other flights are cancelled, yours should be too. Piloted is literally like 50% weather and 50% like skill. And obviously, Julianne and Marie, they were feeling like pretty lucky, you know, theirs was the only flight that wasn't cancelled. Okay, I apologise for me looking like a drowned rat and being out of breath. Basically, I'm the only one in the house, it's very sunny, very warm. Then it starts torrential raining and my mother has washing outside. 
So I had to like leg it downstairs, get all the washing in, run around the house, closing all the windows. So I look like a drowned rat. So she stopped raining as well now. Imagine being this unfit. <laughs> So everything was good on the plane for the first 30 minutes and then they hit some like really bad turbulence and basically like they went into a massive dark cloud and like nothing could be seen on the aeroplane. The only like light they had was the light from the lightning outside. And Maria she was really anxious, she wasn't really the best flyer but like Julianne felt okay you know, she was like fun, she just thought it was a bit of turbulence. And this was an absolute nightmare so like stuff started flying all around the plane you know like all the overhead locker spaces they all opened and there was like Christmas presents, flowers, gifts, cakes flying over and they were like chill like whacking people in the faces. There was lightning all around the plane and Julianne's mother Maria she was terrified she started holding Julianne's hand and she wasn't saying anything and people were like screaming this was a very scary event. Julianne she was sitting by the window and she said that she saw lightning hit the plane and it was like one second she was in the plane and the next second she was out of the plane so like the plane literally like broke apart in mid-air and Julianne she was like still in her seat she was like her seat belt was on but it was a row of three seats her mother was next to her and there was a man next to her mother and she was the only one there her mother and the man had disappeared the last thing she heard her mother say was this is the end it's all over at this point they were 3.2 kilometers above ground and Obviously, whenever a plane does this, you're gonna fall. So she started falling two miles from the sky. When she was falling, she literally like turned upside down in her seat and she, like, she couldn't even do anything, you know? She just had to sit there and fall. Because she was upside down, she could see the canopy of the jungle like fastly approaching. And obviously, she still had like the other seats like connected to her. And because she was upside down, she pretty much thinks that that's what saved her life because it acted like a parachute and slowed her down. She doesn't remember all of it because she passed out, you know, from the pressure, from the fall, from the scare. And the trees really helped to, like, break her fall, you know. She didn't, like, go hurtling towards the ground. Like, she was stopped by a lot of things. So when she was unconscious, she had, like, two dreams. And in the second one, she says that she remembers, like, she felt dirty. And she thought in her dream, you know, this is silly, I'm just going to go take a bath. And she went to the bathroom and that's when she awoke. And she was obviously covered in a lot of dirt. So that's kind of what maybe prompted this dream. But she had survived the crash. She survived. And somehow her watch was still working. And it told her it was 9am like the next day. So it would have been Christmas day. And she'd just woken up in the jungle. She was just so shocked that she'd survived. Like she thought she died. As you would whenever you fall from the sky. So she was like laying underneath the seat. And like her seatbelt had come off. But she knows she had it like on when she was falling so she thinks that like maybe she like regained consciousness for a few seconds and did it and just doesn't remember it but she was like still lying underneath the seat so she was protected and she like shouted out for her mother but obviously there was no response you know because her mother was not in the seat so her mother could have been anywhere her injuries were a broken collarbone a gash on her right arm her left leg also had injuries and like her right eye was swollen shut she also had a concussion and like obviously a lot of smaller injuries but those were the main ones so every time she tried to move her vision would blur and basically whenever you fall from such a distance you have to wear like protective goggles but obviously when you're in a plane crash you don't so like she'd burst a lot of blood vessels in her eye and her eyes were like bloodshot so every time she stood up like or tried to move she just like everything went blurry she couldn't see properly she said her first priority was to find her mother that was like what she wanted to do to make sure her mother was okay to try and help her in any way. And she could hear search planes going over top, but like it was so thick the jungle that they couldn't see or hear her. She couldn't do anything to get their attention. So what she was wearing, like obviously on the plane, was like a very short kind of sleeveless dress, her glasses which she needed to see, and a pair of white sandals. But she actually had lost her glasses, so she literally couldn't see. She'd also lost one of her sandals as well in the fall and she obviously had no clue where they were. And basically when she was there she was just trying to memorise like the crash site, like where she had landed. Because she knew how easy it was to get lost in the jungle and she did not want this to happen to her. And it's so sad but the area that like she crashed in, it was 30 minutes away from like the research centre that her parents worked at. But like obviously she didn't know this so she didn't find it. Now because she couldn't like see without her glasses what she was doing with her sandal that she had left. She was basically like tapping the ground with it before to make sure she wasn't like treading on any snakes or anything. Because she knew that like obviously snakes camouflage. She knew all the animals in this jungle like she knew them. And obviously with a crash like this you're going to find other people and other things. 
and she found like some luggage and it had like some sweets in it and these sweets were all that she like had for food and this is what like she basically survived off these sweets she also found one of the engines from the plane on her search which i can't imagine how sad that would be she said it was very hot and it rained quite a few times a day but like it's the jungle you know it gets freezing at night so at night she'd be freezing and in the day she'd be sweating and she knew the way to survive was to find civilization and the best way to do this was to find a river and to walk down it because civilization needs a river you know it needs water so she knew if she found a river she would soon find civilization so she heard running water and went towards it and she like obviously knew the animals in this jungle and she knew this river had crocodiles in so she was walking through this river knee high when she knew it had like crocodiles snakes piranhas she's 17 years old like i find that mental if I, that happened to me i i would accept my death so she basically like grabbed a stick and was using this to like make sure she didn't disturb any of the piranhas snakes crocodiles and there was also like stingrays in there and devil rays as well and she said at one point she could like feel crocodile swimming around her feet and like they didn't do anything because you know she wasn't being a threat to them she said she felt no fear and was just like determined to survive and i think she probably knew at this point that there was no chance of finding her mom because she'd been out here a few days at this point looking and she knew that if she couldn't find her mom the best like kind of chance was for her to try and survive herself because then she would know what happened to her mom in a way so basically on the fourth day she heard a bird and she recognized this bird because like they are kind of gathered near her like parents workplace and this was like called a king vulture and like she knew this so she followed it she was hoping that it would lead her to something she said she was a little bit worried because there was a lot of them and she knew they only landed when there was kind of food there for them and when a plane crashes there's going to be dead bodies so she was worried that they might be eating the bodies of the other passengers so she turned a corner and there was like a row of three seats like you know like just like a row and they were all connected and like there were people in all three of them and they were like landed head first into the ground and it was about like two feet like deep where they landed from the impact so like they were pretty much like half buried and she knew that none of them were going to be her mother because her mother was strapped into like the seat next to her so there's no way she would have been strapped into a different seat in the jungle you know that wasn't really possible but she wanted to check anyway and she used a stick to look at this one like woman because she thought it could be her mom but she saw this woman had her toenails painted and knew that her mother never had her toenails painted so it wasn't her so she just like kept going and at this point the cut on her right arm had got a lot worse and a fly had laid eggs in it so there was like an infestation of insects in her arm I, I, I don't understand this girl how does she do that she knew she could get blood poisoning and that was something she could not deal with you know she could deal with crocodiles piranhas everything else but not blood poisoning so she didn't really know what to do she just wanted to get help before this killed her off and she tried to like keep it clean and get the insects out which were maggots I think but you know she doesn't know how to do that she's not trained in getting maggots out of her arm so she just kept walking and she walked for 10 days 10 days like jeez that's so long walking through this river and at this point she was so weak because she barely slept she was dehydrated she'd been drinking water from the river but like it's so hot there barely had any food and she was like kind of losing touch with reality and going pretty like delirious. She literally said she felt like she was in a parallel universe with like no other human. So she basically went to rest on the riverbank. But then she noticed there was a boat on the other side. Obviously she was like oh my god a boat. And near the boat there was a small path. And she was like oh my god a path. Civilization. She was so excited. Now this path it was like nine foot long. So not that long really. But she was so weak it took her hours to like go up this path because it was like uphill and when she was there she found like a small shelter at the top and like this shelter it was like really basic you know it had like palm leaves for roofs but like it was better than nothing she kind of thought that she would stay here until someone came because if there was a boat there then someone was bound to come and she thought you know that if she stayed there she'd have shelter she'd be able to sleep and not be like in the elements she was like so happy with this so there were some tanks of gasoline there and she'd seen her father do this trick with their dog and the dog had an like infection like what she had in her arm and her father had like 
sucked the gasoline like up and spat it into the dog's arm to get rid of the infection. So she decided to do this. Oh my god, I can't imagine doing that. She said the pain was unbearable and the maggots started to like try and get further in her arm to get away from the gasoline. And she literally had to pick so many of them out. She picked about 30 maggots out of her arm. So she spent the night in the shelter and just slept. And she awoke to hearing the sound of people. And she literally thought she was daydreaming at first, just like with the boat. You know, when she saw the boat, she literally went over to it and she was like touching it to make sure it was real. And she was like that with the people. Obviously, these people were pretty shocked when they saw her. She was just like a group of local fishermen and they spoke Spanish and so did she. And at first, they were just confused. At first, they thought she was like a water goddess and this was from like a local legend they had in the area. A type of hybrid who's like a water dolphin. It was like a blonde, white skinned woman. So they thought that this was her. But then, obviously, she explained to them in Spanish who she was, that she survived the aeroplane. And they like jumped at the chance to help her. They like took her on the boat to the nearest civilization. And this took a while, to be fair. I like read conflict in reports, but it wasn't like a short boat journey. She got off the boat, people were like scared of her. She had like these bloodshot eyes. They thought she was the devil. They were pretty scared. And basically this local pilot said that he'd fly her to the nearest hospital. And this was kind of her only option. But imagine that, you've been in a plane crash. Then like a few weeks later, you're getting on a plane. Imagine getting on another plane after that. So obviously the hospital helped out. She had 50 maggots in her arm. I can't imagine that. She had like bad burns on her back from the sun because obviously she had no protection. And she recovered from her injuries and she saw her dad and everything. And she helped with the search actually like, which I find insane, like the search in the jungle. But, and I find this so sad. But if she went the other way, then she would have reached civilization in like two days and would have been found. And then her mother's body was also found on January the 12th. This was like obviously the year after now, so it's 1972. And basically, they determined that there was about 14 people who survived the initial crash, her mother being one of them. And her mother, like, had to lie in the jungle and she basically died from her injuries after a few days. But Julianne, she was, like, in bits. She felt so guilty about the fact that she survived. And if she did go the other way, she would have found civilization and she would have found her mother. She went through all of this just to feel guilty when she was 17, though, like. I can't get my head around that. The media love this case. They were like calling her like a miracle girl, which she was, you know. She was like the sole survivor of this crash, which she like found out at the hospital. But she like didn't really want the credit. She was just like heartbroken about what had happened. If you ask me, I think it's two miracles. It's one miracle that she survived the crash and another she survived in the rainforest for this long. Like insane. And obviously the plane company, they like lost their plane license, you know. So they're no longer around, so don't have to worry about that. Don't have to worry about them messing up and crashing. She decided she just couldn't be in Peru. It was too hard for her. So she went back to Germany. And it was there that she, like, followed in her parents' paths. And she studied, like, biology in university. And graduated in 1980. And she actually returned to Peru to study bats, which I find that insane. There's been films made about it as well. And this guy, right, Warner Herzog, I think that's how you say his name, he wanted to make a documentary, and the crazy thing is, he should have been on this flight, but at the last minute he couldn't make it. Like, did a documentary, and yeah, they went back to the crash site, and this is the first time she'd actually been back, and she actually walked some of the paths that she would have walked on her journey back to civilization, and she found some, like, items of luggage. She found a little coin purse that belonged to a little girl. She found one of the exit doors from the aeroplane, and there's like not really a proper crash site because it broke apart so much. Normally they would look for like a gap in the trees, but because it broke apart, there wasn't really like a specific area. And all they could really find was there was one area where the trees were like, they had a lot of items of luggage and people hanging from them. And that's kind of determined to be the main crash site, but there's not really an official one. And what I could find, the store of debris, like no one's actually fully cleaned up this debris, like local tribes and stuff in the rainforest have taken bits for themselves but like there's still stuff out there i think which i find mad so at the moment she's married she's a librarian back in germany and she's basically blocked it all out she said that going back was like therapeutic but she's blocked out all the memories of it she just doesn't want to remember and there is a monument dedicated to like this crash and there's over 60 bodies buried there 
I'm not really sure what happened to the other bodies, you know, like maybe the families just didn't want them there. But yeah, Julianne actually like visited this when filming this documentary. And yeah, I think she's just an incredible woman. And that's all I've got for you. Um, yeah, I just want to say as well, I always leave all the makeup products I've used linked down below. So if you want to see what I've been using, yeah, check them out down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, comment and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.